Hi, welcome to this inside look at Spectrum Protect version 817's ServerMon capability. ServerMon is there in case you are working with Spectrum Protect support and they need to take a look at configuration information, server health, environmental information, and so forth. ServerMon stops and starts with the Spectrum Protect server and it's basically just running in the background, so there's not much you have to do with it. But I know a lot of you are curious and want to know what it's doing, so this demo is going to give you an inside look. Basically, Servermon collects a configurable set of information on server health, configuration, the environment, and it happens at a regular interval that this collection runs. It then takes this information and on a daily basis it zips it up and then stores it as an archive inside of the Spectrum Protect database. ServerMon is installed by default when you upgrade the Spectrum Protect server to version 8.1.7 and the ServerMon background process starts automatically when you start the Spectrum Protect server. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. The first thing you'll notice in your Spectrum Protect version 8.1.7 server is there's a new directory underneath your Spectrum Protect server instance directory called ServerMon, S-R-V-M-O-N. If you go in and list the files underneath there, you'll see these different files. First thing you want to make sure is your Spectrum Protect server is running. So if you do the ps-ax grep dsm serve, you'll see it is indeed running. Next, you can see if your servermon is running by also issuing a ps-ax grep servermon, and you will see it running out here. If you cat the lock file, you'll see that the lock file shows a PID that's the same as the servermon PID inside of this servermon directory. The servermon.log file keeps track of what the servermon process is doing. So if for some reason there is a problem with the servermon, you might want to go in and take a look at the servermon log. So we'll go ahead and VI that so you can see what's inside of the servermon.log file. You'll see, for instance, in here where servermon kicked off different IOSTAT commands and different collection threads. Okay, let's quit out of this file. You'll notice the directory that's in blue, it has basically a date and then dash server. This is where servermon itself is collecting information that it is gathering. If we do an ls on the directory, you'll see the files where servermon is currently putting its data. It's best not to mess with the files in that dated directory. Now in the servermon directory, there's also the servermon underscore 10 minute done, 20 minute underscore done, and 60 minute underscore done. There's also a servermon underscore 24 hour underscore done that's not showing up here because it only exists for a short period before it's copied to that dated directory for archiving. These files contain outputs from the Spectrum Protect server. So if you take a look at them, you'll recognize the query and the show commands and the output will look familiar. So all of this stuff is being saved, and then once a day, Servermon will zip them together and send them to the Spectrum Protect server. If you issue Servermon-help, this will show you all of the commands you can do with the Servermon. You'll see, for instance, dash extract, dash list, dash remove, dash stop. If you want to manually stop Servermon, issue Servermon-stop. Now this must be issued from the instant directory, otherwise you get this error right here. So let's go ahead and change up one directory to the Spectrum Protect Server instance directory and reissue servermon.stop from there. Now that we've manually stopped the serverman process, if you do do a grep on it, you'll see that it is defunct. So basically that servermon process has been stopped, but it is out there in cleanup mode um, waiting for different IOs and such. In order to start Servermon, you will issue Servermon from the Spectrum Protect server instance directory. So if you do have multiple Spectrum Protect servers running on the same server, just make sure you're in the correct Spectrum Protect servers instance directory. You'll probably want the Servermon in the background, and then if you go ahead and run another ps-ax, you will see that Servermon is now up and running, and it does have a new process ID. If you want to list the snapshots that have already been saved by Serverman as archives into Spectrum Protect, you can issue from the Spectrum Protect server instance directory servermon list. And we're just going to look at the first few. And here you can see those specific snapshots. You will notice they have an index 
and then they show the date created and the zipped size. Now it's important to remember that Servermon is pruning these files on its own. By default, it'll keep 90 days worth of snapshots. After the 90 days of the individual snapshots, it'll start keeping one snapshot that represents each week, and it'll keep those for a year. And then it'll also keep one yearly snapshot. In order to extract a snapshot from the Spectrum Protect database, you'll issue this servermon dash extract dash ID equals and then enter the index ID that correlates to the date that you want to take a look at. If you list the files, then you will see this archive file dash and then the specific date dot zip. We can go ahead and unzip this file just so you can see the type of files that might have been in that particular file. So I'll go ahead and create a temporary directory to extract into and we'll call it examine. And now if I go ahead and unzip the specific file I just downloaded, you can see all of the files that it consists of. Support will probably have you just upload the entire zip file, but I'm just going to show you how by unzipping it, you can make sure that that file is valid. And you can also, if you're curious, take a look at what's in it. So let's go ahead and change directory into the CSV files. And now let's go ahead and do a VI on this particular file here. And you can see the type of information that was collected here that support might use for diagnosing the problem. Remember that Servermon by default prunes out these archive logs from the Spectrum Protect database by itself. But if you did want to manually remove one of the snapshots, you can use the Servermon-remove. First of all, you'll once again need the index number for the archive you want to prune off. And then you issue Servermon-remove ID equals 196, and that will successfully remove that snapshot from the Spectrum Protect database. And you can see here now that that's gone. What I've just shown you is the new Spectrum Protect 817 Servermon feature. It runs automatically in the background, but if you do need to manually stop it or start it, you can do that. I also showed you the servermon-help command, which will show you the different subcommands that you can run, including one to list the archive snapshots that have been saved inside of the Spectrum Protect database, and the dash extract, which will extract a snapshot from the database that you could then send to the support folks to help you diagnose a problem. I also showed you how you could manually remove a snapshot from the Spectrum Protect database with the Servermon-remove command. Thank you very much.